petrifying pumpkins. Hey there lads and ladies, it is Petrifying Pumpkins here and welcome to another episode of PSVR News. This episode is quite packed with like lots of information especially with regards to hitman we got an update on the walking dead onslaught and release days and we have the solaris delay to talk about too so let's just hop right into it so first things first io interactive who are the developers of hitman have released this video that you're seeing playing behind me where the developers discuss how virtual reality is going to work in hitman 3 and not just hitman 3 of course Hitman 1, Hitman 2, all those games going to be playable in Hitman 3. The video mainly goes over the kind of stuff you might expect to hear about immersion and stuff like that, but the really interesting stuff is that it shows off new gameplay elements. You see new locations in virtual reality. We get to see some motion controls in action, including a crowbar, like a really cool interaction with a crowbar where he taps a guard in the shoulder, he turns around, gives him a whack in the head, looks very, very cool. Environments look stunning. Of course, we don't know what this is being captured on. Is it running on PC and they're just showing us that? Or is this PS5? Or could it possibly even be PS4 Pro? I know at the end of the trailer, there is a splash screen that says PS4 required with PS Viewer. So that would indicate that maybe it is running on PS4, but it's all up in the air. We'll get to more of that kind of thing soon because they are doing as we speak, it has just wrapped up a Redis AMA, which is Ask Me Anything. I was over there, I was watching that AMA, and a bunch of people were asking them questions. A bunch of them, a bunch of those questions got answered, and some of the stuff is pretty shocking, or at least very interesting. I definitely learned some stuff about this game that I did not know beforehand. The video also talked a little bit about how gunplay is going to work pretty well, how you're going to be shooting around corners, blind firing, and how stealth if you're crouching through the grass. In third person, you'd still have the camera overhead, but in first person, you're in the grass yourself. So not only will it be more difficult for enemies to see you, it's going to be more difficult for you to see the enemies. They're going to be up above you and you're going to be sneaking up on them and, you know, you kind of scare each other maybe kind of a way. So VR is going to definitely be adding a new dynamic to Hitman. So that was the most of the interesting stuff that we saw from this video from IO Interactive. But uh, let's jump into that Redis AMA where the real juicy, moist stuff is. Okay, so the first one here, this guy, Blue5Speed, asked, Hello, IOI. As a lifelong fan of the franchise and VR fiend, and a VR fiend, I'm terribly anxious for VR version of this game. Are physical interactions possible, or do your hands go through everything? Will you be able to reload your gun manually, and is it possible to set up a sniper rifle? So this is the question he asked, and he was answered here. He said, we have collision working, so that your hands stop when touching a wall table, NPCs, etc. You currently reload by the press of a button, so no manual reload in this game, because here's the thing, and this is the shocking thing I wasn't expecting to see. The current version of this game is not using move controllers. It's using the DualShock 4. He doesn't say 4, but, well, that could include the DualSense. Maybe that's why he left out the 4. Anyway, we are, however, utilizing the motion control tracking and gyro to the max, so they're using the motion control that's in these controllers. So everything we've seen so far has not been with move controllers, it's been with the players, you know, reaching out and moving around like that. I'm not sure how well that's gonna go down. It makes sense that they want to have the sticks. That's, I think that's probably the big thing. They don't want Agent 47 to be teleporting around the place because that might mess with the gameplay. It is a stealth game, it's an assassination game. If you're able to teleport all over the place, that could like really break the game, if you know what I mean. There are many reasons for us ending on this decision, but to be honest, we think that we have found a perfect fit for the game through this hybrid control scheme. Best, Eskil. So Eskil is the name of this IO interactive developer here. Uh, so I think that's probably, I'm not sure how that's gonna go down. I think that must that might be a mixed reaction. Like I'm glad I'm gonna have the stick, but it's kind of gonna be a little bit of a bummer not to maybe be using two hands. So you'd imagine if you're using this, you can only really control one hand with motion controls. It's gonna be interesting to see. I'm gonna have to like see more of that in action, ideally before I can judge it for myself. But uh, that's interesting. Very interesting. So next question here is from a reply from this guy, Alfie1007. On the clip they released, it shows melee combat with a guard in that he tapped him on the shoulder. So if that was there, it would probably do the same as for combat. I can imagine it would just be harder to knock someone out, aka not just the one hit shown with the crowbar. I believe he's asking, he's, he's clarified it here. He says, I meant guards. When I mentioned hand-to-hand -hand combat, 
I know you can knock out NPCs with one hit. So he's worried about knocking out guards with one hit. And the reply from Eskel here is that you can indeed knock NPCs out with your fist or slap them with an open hand. The crowbar has better reach though and can be thrown as an attack or used as a distraction. I guess the guy was worried that you could only knock people out with a crowbar and you won't be able to do it with like your fists. As someone who hasn't played the flat game, it's kind of hard to understand these concerns because I'm just going to assume that in the flat game you could go up behind someone, choke them out or something like that. So basically, it seems like that will be replicated in some way here in virtual reality, so we don't have to worry about that. So next question here is, will it be released on both PS4 and PS5? And if so, are there any differences? This question came up a lot, as did PC VR support. We'll get into that in a sec. So Travis here from Interactive Entertainment says, Hey, I've answered this elsewhere too, but we're still working on the specifics for how exactly PSVR owners will be able to play the game. We had a line about this in the blog post on PlayStation website at announcement. So I went and I found that blog post over here and I believe the quote is this one that he's talking about. So this one right here where he says, we're working to finalize the specifics for how PSVR owners can enjoy Hitman and VR and we'll have more details to share in the months ahead. So it sounds like things aren't finalized yet. Maybe there's some stuff up in the air with Sony and that's why they can't say PS5, PS4, Pro. Maybe they can't talk about bundles and stuff like that. Yes, if like you can get the whole trilogy together. So their hands are, seem to be tied to some degree, especially when they're talking about PC viewer stuff too, which we'll get to. And that question came from CRW Composer. And next question then is from Havertz Clue. He says, can we get a costume of Agent 47 wearing a PSVR headset when we're in flat mode? And a little bit, you know, just a bit of comic relief here. He says, I'll talk to the character artist, but no promises. And another guy here, Eskil, says, that's not a bad idea. So look out for that. Maybe they'll actually add that. That would be pretty funny. Next question then is from James Evan Bond. And he has like three questions here. I'm not sure how many get answered, but can we expect to actually climb pipes and scale ledges in virtual reality? That building in Dubai would be crazy to be Ethan Hunt for a few. So I'm assuming what he's asking is, can we physically climb? How does crouching work is his next question. How does reloading work? And we already know that's a button press that's been answered already. And his last question then is, how does hand-to-hand -hand combat and stealth takedowns work? So the answer he gets then is from Sid Cell. If I'm saying that right, I'm not too sure. So question number one, yes, you can climb pipes and scale ledges in VR. And yes, Dubai particularly has some intense moments there. But when we think back to what he said earlier, the different developers said earlier that we're only going to be using DualShock, I doubt we'll actually be doing, you know, physical grabbing. It's probably just going to be using the sticks, I would imagine. I think if this guy maybe worded his question a bit more specifically about manually climbing, he might have got a different answer. But technically, you know, even if we were climbing with just the sticks, this answer would still be true, if you know what I'm saying. Question number two, currently crouching is a button press, which works well in our opinion. We did some prototyping to make physical standing and crouching but deemed that a button press was actually more than sufficient so it looks like we're going to be you know we're not going to be standing and crouching in physically in real life it's just going to be a button press you know which is what we kind of come to expect from games on psvr number three reloading is also a button press we knew that already but the reason he gives here is another one of those hey this actually works totally fine moments so basically it sounds like if it isn't broke don't fix it for them uh, we're kind of used to that too. Firewall Zero Hour, of course, famously, button reload. And if you ask me, that works great for, especially with a multiplayer game, you know, where you want to have consistency. And number four then, when he asked about hand-to-hand -hand combat and stealth takedowns, how are they going to work? The answer to that is it's going to be freeform, motion-based melee and barehanded close quarter combat. But that was one of the first things we knew we really wanted to do for Hitman VR and we are still getting a lot of enjoyment every day when we play from actually being able to punch with a fist, slap and melee with crowbars in each our own style. Keep in mind that's all in with the DualShock 4. But look, they say it works and they're enjoying us, then I'm, I'm willing to give it a chance. Next question then is from myself, as you can see here, where I wanted to know the footage that we've been seeing from PS4, PS4 Pro or PS5, like what was that footage being shown on? And they didn't answer, which I was kind of expecting. When it comes to anything to do with Sony, their hands are gonna be tied. So that's kind of a, just another wait and see kind of a thing. So next up is a question from Miss Molotov and she is the moderator over on or slash PS viewer and she was kind of responsible for setting up this whole AMA thing in the first place. So mad props to Miss Molotov for doing that. So she asked three questions here. I was wondering how long has the VR version of the game been in development? When did you first think about making Hitman in VR and what was the first aspect of the game you met in VR? So he's 
response, this is from Sitzel, is we started looking into this a bit over a year ago. Actually, in some ways, the sense that Hitman would be the perfect match with Vior has been lurking in the backs of our minds for way longer than that. Pace of the game, the sense of place, the attention to detail in our locations, the emergent nature of our gameplay systems, and especially AI, just lends itself so naturally and beautifully to VR. That's also why actually going in and making it has been so amazing for us. Our gut feeling was not wrong. So that's just a bit of background as to what got them thinking about putting this into VR in the first place. As for the first aspect, was getting that camera into our favorite bald head. We knew that we had to go first person to do this in VR. So that's that question answered. Next up is from JJ Gamester. He says, can you put your gun behind your back? And if so, do NPCs react to it? Is there any virtual reality trophies? Thank you. So the answer to that was the outside in tracking makes this tricky, unfortunately. It is a very cool mechanic though, and we have discussed this. So what I imagine that is, because I haven't played the game flat, is I'm guessing you can just hide your gun behind your back to kind of have a stealthy kind of approach. Uh, but obviously, having the DualShock behind your back with your control, with just holding it with one hand and you're still controlling it, I can't imagine that will actually make its way unless they add in move controller support later on down the line, which is possible, I suppose. Uh, next question then is from Piggy Hero. He says, he or she says, how will this work with the transition of generations? Will this work on PS5? Will it have, will it have upgraded visuals on PS5? In addition, how do you handle movement with the PlayStation Move controllers? Do you have teleport only or is there a smooth locomotion? Travis replies to the same, we covered this as best we can right now on the blog, which is kind of not really covering us at all. Uh, but their hands are tied, so I'm not gonna give them shit over that. So basically we're still working on the specifics for how that's going to work together with Sony. Once it's finalized, we'll be talking about it. And of course he avoided the question of the PlayStation Move controllers because there is no PlayStation Move controllers, apparently. Unless I'm misunderstanding it, but I don't think I am. Next question is from Game Alias. Thanks for doing this AMA. I'm a big viewer fan and my biggest issue with this is the lack of titles that really hold my attention. Being a big Hitman fan, this is a match made in heaven. However, it is unclear from your guys' communication whether or not VR will be supported on PC. So this is the best answer for the whole PC thing. There's been like a, like loads of these questions are all about PC viewers. They're coming over here, it's coming here. Travis have the best answer you read between the lines basically and you will be happy with what you hear i think if you're a PC, if you're a pc viewer guy so he says hey we've obviously been reading all the comments we've received about viewer in the last week it's been great to see the enthusiasm and interest from pretty much everyone with the viewer headset we hear you we hear you that's clue number one now that you mention us Hitman's legacy on PC is at the front of our mind this year because we're fast approaching the 20th anniversary of Codename 47, which has only ever been released on PC. 20 years of a franchise is pretty special, but that's for another day. So somewhere, I'm guessing, uh, sometime later this year there's going to be a 20th anniversary. They will do something special for that, maybe announce PC VR support. But he says that's for another day. For virtual reality, what I can tell you today is that Hitman 3 will include PS VR support at launch. Keywords there, he's saying at launch, read between the lines, you know, see what he's trying to tell you. We'll keep sharing more details and information when we can. Thanks for the question. So basically, this pretty much confirms that PC VR will get this game. Sony probably have some kind of timed exclusivity deal going on. And they're probably not allowed to officially say anything about it until that deal is up or maybe, you know, at some certain point of time. So PC viewer fans can, you know, rest assured it's coming. It's on the way. Probably. Like, obviously, he didn't confirm us, but, you know, you can see what he's saying there. Next question then is from Dexter and he says, thanks for doing the AMA. Will there be a version bundled with Hitman 1 and 2 locations for those of us that don't already own them, which includes me? And two, what movement mechanics will be used when using the move controllers? So Travis replies saying exactly how that's going to work in Hitman 3 isn't concretely in place yet, but we're likely to have a solution similar to what we have now. In Hitman 2, you can go into the in-game store and buy Hitman 1 or upgrade to the Gold Edition, etc. Seeing as you need Hitman 3 to access VR, that's important. You need Hitman 3 if you want to play any of these in VR. This is a very elegant solution for us to use. Again, it could change, that's so it's not set in stone. But it looks like, based on this answer from Travis, once you buy Hitman 3, there'll be an option there to say, you know, download Hitman 2, Hitman 1 map packs for a certain price, you know, uh, which is elegant, sounds good. I like the sound of that. Hopefully it won't be too expensive, 
but if you already own Hitman 1 and 2, you can just import them that way too, so you don't have to worry about it either way, basically. Uh, and then as for the move controller comment, he says, look for Eskel's answer about movement controls. Winky face. Next question then is from Gulilas, I think, and he or she says, can you swing lethal items to kill people? And the answer is, indeed you can. So there you go. Next question then is from Spidermass311, and he asks, dual wield pistols, viewer? And... Eskil, I believe, answers, he says, All right, might as well bite the bullets. Currently, 47 wheels, one gun at a time, like the regular game. And, of course, that adds up with there being no move control or support. So then, Soviet Paper Plates asks, I'm a huge fan of the Hitman series and I have a couple of questions to ask about the new viewer game. How will movement work? I feel like it would break the flow of the game if Agent 47 was allowed to just zip anywhere he feels on the map. And that's, I think that's an important point. Uh, bypassing guards and such. And then the second question is how will dragging bodies work? When we grab them, does it lock on or do we have to hold it down the entire time? So then Eskin, Eskil replies saying, hey, we are working on different comfort options. It will be smooth movement as the regular game. We will have various settings that players can toggle to their choosing, click turn, vignette, etc. So that's what he says about the comfort options. And the question about dragon bodies works great you do tether to the feet or hands as in the regular game but your arms are free to move so you can now fling them around into bushes etc which sounds really fun next question is from holiday 812 he or she says will this be an add-on to purchase if you already own hitman or will it be a separate game and travis replies saying you can only play vr with hitman 3 that's very important again should really emphasize that if you already own hitman 1 and 2 you can import those locations into hitman 3 and play them in vr there so that sounds like a great solution if you can get hitman 1 and 2 for cheap right now you should probably do it and cheese 122 asks how will changing disguises work in vr to which Eskel replies saying, Hey Cheese, changing disguises works similar to the regular version, currently through a button prompt. We are working on ways to better communicate what disguise you are currently in. You can of course always take a glance down on yourself and look at your arms, but that's not always enough. You do know when you're the flamingo though. So we've got some confirmation here that it's just a button press to change outfits, but the big confirmation I guess from reading this is that you can look down and you can see Agent 47's body and that will reflect whatever suit he's wearing too. But I'm guessing, depending on the suit, some of them might not be too obvious just based on the, you know, the sleeves or whatever. Like, you probably won't be able to see whatever hat you're wearing, you know. But apparently this is a flamingo outfit, and that will be very obvious. So, Breakthrough Science has a big, like, 20,000 word essay question, but basically he's asking about, like, cheat codes and stuff like that. And the response is, Hey Science, making cheat codes options are not on our current to-do list. Get good is my advice, so he just kind of roasts them a little bit here. I can say that you might have a better chance in VR as the gunplay and melee is very different experience than the regular version. Mr. Monkey Man says, thanks for doing this. Okay, so we got one here from Mayor Dad. I'm not really saying that pr correctly, I doubt. He's got a few questions. So how does the movement mechanic work in VR? And a sub questions, I guess. Are there any multiplayer modes available for the VR version? Is it a PSVR timed exclusive? They won't answer that. Are there any new gameplay mechanics that are exclusive to the VR version, except for the first person view? And four, can we expect the first person mode out of VR platform? The response from Eskel is, here's what I can tell you. We are putting all our resources into the single player at the moment. Yes, there's quite a bit of mechanics that differ from the regular game, motion track controls when aiming and wielding melee items, opening doors by touch, etc. Getting this to work in first person in VR has been an effort, and for now, VR is where you will experience it. So, if you're not a VR player and you still want to play this in first person, for now you won't be able to do that, but just the way he said for now kind of hints to the fact that maybe at some point down the future, they will release a first person mode for the game, who knows. And he certainly didn't rule us out there anyway. And so yeah, that is all the good stuff for from this AMA, I believe. Uh, I think the big takeaway here is that we're going to be using DualShock 4 controllers instead of Move controllers, which is kind of, I guess it's shocking because all the trailers and gameplay, you know, you saw the motion controlled hand moving around and you just assumed it was going to be the Move controller because not many games use the motion for this in any, like, extensive capacity. It's always the Move controllers that have been used in, you know, historically for that kind of stuff. So that's an interesting change. Anyway, that's it for the Hitman stuff. As for right now, I'm sure we'll be talking about this game much more in the lead up to its release in January. Until then, let's move on to the next topic. 
So The Walking Dead Onslaught has finally got a release date, September 29th, which is not far away at all. It's coming to PS Viewer and PC Viewer at the same time, so no staggered release if that's something you were worried about. Of course, Saints and Sinners had a staggered release, that's not an issue this time. So if you were a fan of The Walking Dead Saints and Sinners that came out earlier this year, this is probably something that has piqued your interest. And looking at this now, it does seem to borrow a lot of gameplay elements from Saints and Sinners, the combat look, as you can see, stabbing them in the face and stuff like that is very similar. Uh, I will say that the style looks a lot different. So, The Walking Dead Saints and Sinners took place in the comic book, or the graphic novel universe, whereas this one, Onslaught, takes place where the TV show takes place, that universe. So it's got a bit more of a realistic look. It's got the characters from the show. You're going to be playing as Daryl, Rick, Michonne. These big characters that are kind of pretty famous for anyone who really knows anything about The Walking Dead, you probably know at least one of those characters. Of course, we've seen this game showed off like a lot, like over a year now it's been, you know, teased. It was shown in the past with the co-op mode and that mode has been cussed because they wanted to focus on the story mode. So, single player experience now. That may disappoint some people. I was kind of hoping for that co-op mode because it would really differentiate it a bit more from the Saints and Sinners. But, having looked at this gameplay, it still looks pretty polished, it looks pretty slick. I'm sure that's the PC footage they're being shown instead of PS Viewer footage. Probably gonna look a bit worse than that. Hopefully not too much worse. Um, but a little bit more juicy information about this. Uh, this comes from UploadVR.com, where they confirmed this game will also work on PS5. So it's gonna be backwards compatible. One of the first games, if not, I think it probably is the first game that has has that confirmation. So you know, we don't know if Firewall is going to work backwards compatible on PS5. We don't know about Resident Evil 7, but we do know that The Walking Dead. Onslaught will, so that's interesting, and that should make a lot of people happy who are planning on getting the PS5 anytime soon. Anyway, let's move on to the next topic. Solaris Offworld Combat, which was supposed to come out on the Oculus platforms at the end of this month, in just about 10 days or so, has been postponed until September 24th. This came from First Contact Entertainment's official Twitter. Put out a post detailing the delay. Now, they didn't, well, they, I say detail and they haven't given any specific reason for why it's been delayed other than they wanted the day one experience to be, you know, at a certain level that it wouldn't be if it released when it was supposed to release. So it's not completely ununderstandable considering, you know, COVID-19, all this kind of stuff. So everyone's working from home. It's only kind of natural that some stuff was going to be pushed and delayed. And then in the comments below this tweet, they did confirm that the PS Viewer version of Solaris is still on track to come 2020. Now, we never did get a month or a launch window for the PS Viewer version other than 2020. So this delay, you know, doesn't really impact me too much. I don't think now it is possible it has pushed back the PS Viewer delay behind the scenes, but seeing as was never announced, it's not bumming me out too much. But maybe you were one of those Oculus Quest platform holders or an Oculus platform holder and you were looking for this to come out. Gonna have to wait another month now, but fingers crossed it will be worth it. We'll have that extra polish that we kind of expect from First Contact Entertainment, especially after playing Firewall. So yeah, that is it for this episode of PS Viewer News. Thank you very much for watching, but before I go, let me give a special thank you to my Patreon supporters whose names are on the screen right now. Thanks to their generosity, they're helping keeping this channel going. And in particular, I'd like to give a massive thank you to the following top tier Patreon supporters. We've got Tradition, Chop517, Pete Hawkins, Crumb, and Daniel the Pumpkin Patch Kid. Thank you so much for that generosity. It really does help out this channel. And finally, before I go, let me thank Decepticon for letting me use his music. If you want to check him out in the description below or go to Decepticon.com, check him out on Spotify, Bandcamp, all the usual places. That is it for this video. I will see you in the next one. Until then, stay moist.